factor that one. Why don't you try? Let me send you try first off. Let's, let's sort of try together. What's the first step in every factoring problem? Find GCF. GCF. What's in common? What do they all have in common? Nothing. Nothing. Right? There's no number that goes into 3, 16, and 5. Do they all have an X? How about letters? Do they all have an X? No. So there's no GCF. No GCF. Okay. All right. Well, we'll just go to the two parentheses. We had that before. That's, not, that's nothing major. Let's go to the two parentheses. What? We, we look for multiply to be 5, add to be 16, right? So if I do my thing... My diamond thing. What multiplies to be 5 and adds to be 16? What times what is 5? 1 and 5. That's all there is that multiplies to be 5. Do they add to be 16? No. No. Not even close. So this one must not be factorable, prime. No, it's quite factorable. It's just not this way. This is not the minor leagues anymore. So I want you to see first off that something's new here. Something's brand new, and you have to take a whole new approach to it. So everybody see the old ways won't work, right? Why not? What's, what's different about this one? Like, how are you going to identify this one as different? What is it? Well, we had a bunch that didn't have Green's Carbon Factor before. Or what? Well, eh, it's not really it. They all are odd numbers. The, the only one that X is in both is the X squared is the X and X. Damn. It's a number in the front oh, yeah, that doesn't factor out as a GCF. That's the first time we've had that. Up to now, every time there was a number in front, we pulled it out in the one big princey step. When we got down to business, there was no number in the front. That's what distinguishes the harder trinomials from the easier. When you have a number in front that is not a common factor, doesn't come off, it's there to stay, that three is like, I'm here and I'm staying. The problem gets much harder, much more complex. So that's the deal, number in the front. That's how you're going to recognize these when they're all mixed up on the exam, next exam we take. So forget about all this monkey business. We need a totally new approach. So when... When there's a number in the front, what are you going to do? Well, this is where I have options as a teacher, and I never know what to do, honestly. I, change, I waffle around and change my mind. Different semesters, I do different things. So there's a zillion. There's, that's not really a number, but there's a lot of different ways to do this. You can go on the Internet. You can find all kinds of ways. These are hard, and people, you know... Yeah, you can go on the internet and you can find a, a lot of different ways to do this. I've taught it all different ways myself. You know, I was just thinking, this is my last time probably I'll ever teach basic algebra in my life. Because they're eliminating the curriculum. You know, they're getting rid of it. So I'm not scheduled to teach 61 next semester. So this is it. I've probably taught it, I don't know, 100 times probably. Anyway, this is it. It's kinda, I'm going to get all teary-eyed here for a minute now. <laughs> All right, so uh, maybe it's not that dramatic. But um, so, how do you factor? Well, I'm going to show a method called slide and divide. I have my, I have reasons I don't really like it, but it's nice, it, it's systematic, step one, step two, step three. Have you heard of the bow tie method? What's it called? Bow tie method. Bow tie method. How's bow tie work? I've never heard that bow name. Tie. The Shelby special here. So when there's a number in the front, what we're going to do is we're going we're gonna to do the diamond thing. But the first thing you need to do, let me do, let me, well, I should probably do step one first off. Take that um, front number times the back. You've got to take that number and multiply it by the net back number. Three times five, 15. That's the special, that's the first special, main special new step. You got to get them together. So they make that 15. Then we're going to do a diamond 
And that, it's, that three, that 15, is what goes up here now instead of five. Everybody see the difference? That's what's different. Normally, we grab that number at the back, and that becomes our multiply. That's what you do if there's no number in the front. But if there's a number in the front, you multiply it and put that up there. See the difference? Mm -hmm. okay. And now the middle is add. That hasn't changed. Add to be plus 16. Multiply to be plus 15. Good so far. So far it's the same except the only difference is we've taken that front number and multiplied the back and put that up top instead of just putting the last number up top, right? The rest. Now, what are two numbers that multiply to be, what times what's 15? 3 and 5, but that won't make 16. Yeah, uh, 1 times 15 or 15 times 1, either order, right? Order doesn't matter. Right? Those, both positive, huh? They multiply to be 15, add to be 16. We good so far? But now we have to do something special. Again, because we had a number in the front. Normally, I would just go, oh, done. You know, X plus 1, X plus 15, next problem. But that's not right. Because we had a number in the front, I've got to do something special. What? Well, this is where we got the, the Shelby method of the, you make a bow here. Why, why are we making a bow, Shelby? Well, I understand you, and we're going to put out here the front, and you just do the 3x? Yeah. Why 3x instead of 3x squared? Because when you multiply the x together, you get x squared, but yeah, yeah. it simplifies down. Good, good. Yeah, so you just take this to the first power, 3x and 3x. You take that front term just with a single x. I know that seems kind of weird. <laughs> like that. We good so far? I know I'm doing it a little backwards from how Shelby did it, but same basic idea. We good so far? Now, what was the first step we did? I multiplied that 3 in the front, didn't I? So I got to undo that, so to speak. It's... It's all a little shaky. It's, it doesn't thrill me. It's not really mathematically as rigorous as I would like. None of these methods are. But, um, but here we go anyway. So that 3 we multiplied by in the front. I've got to go back, and I've got to ask myself, does this 15 and this 3, do they have anything in common? What goes into 15 and 3? I can divide them both by 3, can't I? Right? And that'll be... That'll be x plus 5. I just switched the order, put it here, and put it there. Everybody see what happened there? I took those two numbers, 3x plus 15, and I divide. Why am I dividing them both by 3? Because in the beginning, we multiplied by 3. It's like I've got to undo that. I know this is a little funny. Divide them both by 3 becomes x and 5. That's one of your two. The other one is these two, 3x and 1. And we're done. That's the answer. Same answer Shelby got, just switched around. So this will take a little practice, huh? Uh, did you say slide and divide? Yeah, well, I changed my mind. I was in... <laughs> that was the old method. Oh, okay. It saves a little I bit. Stuck with this for a while, so. Yeah. What do you do now that you're in Calc 2? Everything in a bow. <laughs> um, do, do you do bow tie? Uh, I do do bow tie most of the time. Um, other than that, I do the box method. Okay, right. It's, it's right. Same. Yeah. Same. Yeah, I always say everybody does that. that gets into calculus. They, they can just look at it. Yeah. So, after a while, you don't need these methods. Yeah. 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 But um, that, so that's our answer. So our answer is 3x plus 1, x plus 5. That's right. Let's check it. Let's prove it's true. Let's check it because you guys are wondering. Is that really true? Let's check it. Remember, you'd foil it out. You don't have to write this down. Just watch. If you foil it out, 3x squared, right? 3x times x and 3x times 5. You guys know how to foil quite well. 15x, and then this guy goes to both, plus 1x, plus 5. 
See how these middle two, what do they make? 16x, 3x squared plus 16x plus 5. See how it goes back to the original? See how it's right? We did correctly unmultiply it, as the, as the remultiplying proved. So that's it. You don't have to check it. I'm just showing you it's true. All right, so one more time. Let me go over what we do. So what's different when you have a number in the front is you've got to multiply the back number, put that in the top instead of just the back number, right? You multiply that front, and then the middle number goes to the bottom. You do the same thing, find your two numbers. But then you've got to take that 3x, not the whole x squared, but just 3x, and put it in the little bow thing here and here. And then you've got to divide by that 3 you first multiplied by right here. Divide the multiply 3. x plus 5, and then these two just bring them down. 3x plus 1. And that will get you the factorization. All right, we need to, we need to practice some. Huh? Can you take the first step? Let's just step it out together. Do a step, and I'll do a step, and let's do it one step at a time. So do the first step. How would you recognize this as a harder one? Because the last number is... Because there's a number in the front that's not coming out as a GCF. They don't all have five in common, do they? There's a number in the front that's not coming off as a GCF. So that means it's a harder one. What do you do with that number in the front? Multiply him to the back. Right? Step one is multiply him to the back. So do that first step. Take that five. Multiply. My bow tie doesn't look so bow tie ish. So we good to there? You guys are rolling it out, looks like. So what are the two numbers that, what times what multiplies to be negative 35? 1 and 35. How do the signs always go? Bottom bigger, right? Bottom bigger. So plus 1, minus 35. They multiply to be negative 35. They have to be negative 34. Good? All right. Now I'll try to, with my great artistic skills, make the bow tie thing. And uh, put this, hey, put this out here, all right? And so now, me, now, do you remember what you put in the bow thing? The bow tie. The bow tie. What, what do you put in it? Five. Yeah, this without the squared, huh? Just 5x, 5x, good? It's the front term without the square. Why without the square? Because we know in a minute when we do the parentheses, you know, it's going to be 5x, you know, and just regular, right? Uh, I have a question. What if it's, when it's not x squared? Yeah, that, I'll show you when we get to one of those. No advanced questions, please. All right. So, uh, so now, what do we do from here? Is everybody good to there? Is that okay? Do you remember how you do the next? Remember, this 5 we multiplied by, we need to what? Divide now. Well, where, where, where can, is it these two? No, they don't have anything. 5x and 1, another come. These two, huh? Divide by 5, divide by 5. Divide them both by 5. 5x five over 5 is x. M minus 35 over 7 is minus, minus seven. 7. Huh. And then this, these guys just come down as they are. 5x plus 1. There it is. Kind of messy, but it's, it's, it's quicker. Is that good? Want me to explain now more? Does that make sense what happened? So, you found, I found the two numbers that multiply to be minus 35, add to be minus 34, 1 and negative 35. Put the bow tie, the 5x, 5x, and then these two are both divisible by 5, right? 5 goes into both of them, which is our front number. You know you're going to divide by that front number at the very end because you multiply by it. You've got to undo that, so to speak. So, they divide them both by 5, x minus 7. And there's our answer. What I don't like about this or the other method I was going to show you, slide and divide, is the same thing. This is like a this is like a cleaner, quicker slide and divide. Both of them are sort of magic. Like, like, why is that true? Why do you put the bow and you know why do you divide one and not the other? And 
Yeah, I don't like that. It's not rigorous. It's not like logic step one leads to step two leads to step three. It's not really clean. It's true. But basically, the logic is more complex, so it's not obvious. So anyway, you, you're, you're probably like, whatever, Ms. Terry, we just want the answers. <laughs> Great. I'm okay, sort of, too. I just don't like math like magic, but all right, we'll do some magic for a while. There we go. Good? Not good? All right. I used to make everybody do it where you just do two parentheses and you just think it out. And that was hard for people. Yeah, it was just hard. And, they, and, and I, would just, I would just yell at them, can't you think with the number? No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. I wouldn't yell. <laughs> it, it, anyway. Try that one. Let's, let's do the bow tie method. That's a plus there. All right. All right, so when there's a number in the front, what do we do? Take the 9 and multiply the back. Four, four, I'm, trying, I'm trying to do the bow tie a little better here. So positive 45, and then they add to be 46, right? What times what multiplies to be 45? 1 and 45. Both positive. And, and uh, adds to be 46. That's my pair. Now, I forgot the bow tie thing. Out here to the side, we're supposed to put um, the 9x and the 9x, right? What was in front. Now, do you all understand the very last step? The very first step was to take that 9 in the front and multiply. So the very last step is to undo that. Divide by that 9. You with me on that? It begins with multiplying by the front number. It ends with dividing by that front number. So I'm going to divide by 9. Now, divide what by 9? Either these two or those two. Which two does 9 go into both of them? Yeah, these two. Divide by 9, divide by 9. Cancels. Put that in the front. We just put x's in the front. 45 divided by 9 is 5. And these two just bring down... 9x plus 1, there we go. You could swap the parentheses, same answer. There it is, right? Is that good? Okay, so this one's more tricky. So you put the, put the bow tie... Like that, we good so far? And then <clears throat> grab that 4 and multiply the back. 4 times 13, what's that 4? 52. Positive. And then grab the middle and put it in the bottom, minus 28. Okay. Now use your calculator, right? Take that 52 and start dividing it. If you divide by 2, you'll get 26 right away. And you go, oh yeah, 2 and 26 can do it, huh? So then you go, okay. 2 and 26. Now, what signs is the, the bottom bigger, right? Bottom bigger. So this will be negative 26, negative 2. Right, if you lose $2, think about money. Right? We use money all the time. Lose $2, lose $26, lost $28. Right? Um, and the two negatives multiply to be positive 52, don't they? So that's good. Okay, now we're ready to get our final answer. How do we do it? Well, you look at these two numbers, right? What goes into 4x and negative 2? What goes into both of those? 2. We divide. So whenever you're done, you divide out whatever's in common. Divide by 2. Divide by 2. That'll be 2x minus 1, huh? Is that good? And then the other side, these two. What goes into those two? two? Again, two. Divide by two. See, we can't do four this time. Four doesn't go into 26, does it? Not evenly. We're not going to do decimals. Manuel wanted to do decimals, but we're not going to do decimals. So divide them both by two there. Right? So what do you get? Bring this one over here, 2x. This one down here, minus 13. And we got it. What about the, you need to include the y's? Oh, yeah. Just kidding. Yes. Right. Yeah. When there's a y squared on the right side, 
Just throw them in there, exactly. Yeah. Yeah, you don't need to do anything fancy. Just throw them in. That's right. Do you need them? Yeah, you do need them. You just throw them in there. Yeah. Because we have x squared on the left. There's got to be x's on the left, y squared on the right, and y's on the right. That's right. Just throw them in there. Is that good? Is that making sense on that? That was more interesting. That's crazy. It's a little more advanced, isn't it? One more special thing. You know how we were saying the number of the four in the front, you had to multiply by it, so in the end you divide? So I was mistaken. You don't necessarily divide by four, do you? We just divided by two and by two. But actually, those two numbers you divided by two and two, what do they make if you multiply them? Four. The, the things you divide by will always make your original number in front. I don't know if that matters much. What's that? <laughs> But you know, it says, it's sometimes you can't. Just simply because I could. You just divide by whatever can go into 4 and 2. 2. See, like 2, right? Sometimes that's, that's, you that's the biggest thing I can divide into those 2. And same thing here. I couldn't do 4 into 26. If you try to be a decimal, it doesn't go any easier. So, um, so I had to do 2. That's all the way. And they don't have to be the same. Yeah. Later, we'll probably have one with a 6, and maybe one's up by 2, and the other by 3. Yeah, they don't have to be the same. Good question. Yeah. All right.